Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, this is Lenovo IdeaPad 530S. And as you can see, there is one key is missing. At the same time, there was some kinds of liquid damage. And that's the reason why all the key is not working. So to change a keyboard like this sort of machine, it costs a lot. The reason is this sort of keyboard panel is not a separate panel like, you know, old fashioned laptop. It comes with the actual, the top chassis, okay? And that's the reason why it's very expensive. But still, there are two kinds of replacement that you can get. One with the complete plastic panel and the keyboard itself, which costs a lot, like more than 100 pounds. And also we can get like this sort of replacement. So as you can see in this keyboard, there is no any frame or anything. It's just the keyboard itself. And also we can see there are a lot of dots right here and a lot of holes that you can see. Those holes attached to the rabbits, which one hold the actual keyboard into the place. So this one is very 20 or 30 pounds. You can save like almost 100 pounds. But the problem is to replace this keyboard and install the new one it's very very difficult it takes time so let's do it today i'm going to show you in this video how to replace this sort of keyboard without frame for ideapad 530s so first of all we're going to switch off this machine if there is any power and we're going to open the back cover okay so make sure you do have the right screwdriver. This is the pentalube one. All the screws are same type. Uh, and I'm not sure if the length is same or not. So I would suggest to you, please keep organizing the screws. Top one should be on the top, right on right, left on left. So you're going to open up all the screws. Then we'll pull out the back cover to get access into the main boat. And first of all, the things that we have to do, disconnect the battery. So let's carry on. Alright, so now in this second step, our main focus is to pull out this motherboard. So we have to disconnect all the flex very carefully because a lot of flex are very fragile and very delicate and sensitive. So focus in there. And then we have to remove all the screws. And remember, those screws are different, different one, different in size, length and the thickness. Okay. So you can make a kind of a diagram to keep the screws organized. And the second thing is there are a lot of flex cables and long wires, as you can see the speaker wires and everything and the trackpad. So we have to pull out every single component from here, especially when you try to pull out this top panel. I mean the plum rest. We have to be careful with the hinges. Can you see those hinges? Those are, you know, very sensitive. So make sure you pull it correctly and separate the top panel. Once we separate it, then we can leave the actual screen panel. We don't have to do anything with the screen panel. It's better to leave it away. And now we're gonna remove it one by one.
All right, so once the motherboard and every single component has removed, the most hardest part in this repair to remove this metal frame. As you can see, there are a lot of plastic rabbits, a lot of black dots, okay? Those are disposal, okay? So we have to remove every single old rabbits. And then we can pull out this main metal frame and we can get access to the broken keyboard and we can remove it easily but believe me to remove this one is one of the hardest job in time wise but if you do have patience if you try one by one it would come out easily okay so this part took about 20 minutes for me and i tried to use many different tools For example as you can see i used the icisma because this is kind of flat and I can just rub it so it cuts the actual plastic bits and which one makes easy to pull this out and then also I use a kind of precision tools kind of a grinding uh, precision tool and it was terrible it didn't work out anyway you're gonna see in this video but try not to use any kinds of automatic tool or elect electronic tool to cut out this sort of rabbits as you can see center of this keyboard panel there is a black sticker underneath this sticker there are also some rabbits so we have to remove this black sticker and get access into the every single rabbits and cut it out all right try to clean it as much as possible otherwise you know that could make a lot of scratch on the plum rest and stuff like that Alright, so this is the fourth step. As you can see, the metal frame is flat and nice and clean. We don't have to struggle that much because we removed every single rabbit. And now, if you push the keyboard, it's going to come out without any struggling. And we can remove it easily. Alright. Now, it's pretty simple. We're going to put the new replacement in here. And before we put it on, we have to clean it a little bit because there are a lot of plastic bits and pieces. And then we need to put back every single thing okay and make sure put the right screws into the right hole and make sure you connect every single flex connector properly especially the LCD one and when you push back the actual hinges into the place make sure it's in the right alignment 
and pretty much that's all let's carry on until we finish and we're gonna test out the keyboard hopefully everything would be fine and please if you do like this video don't forget to subscribe thank you